Hello, and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to teach you how to replicate your favorite garment of clothing. I'm gonna replicate this tank top and make it into this tank top. First thing you'll need is the piece of clothing you want to replicate. Today, we're doing this very simple by just replicating this tank top. It's got two pieces of knit fabric, so we're gonna replicate that. Um, you will need your fabric of choice. Today we're using this beautiful pile of fabric from Blackbird Fabrics. This is a bamboo jersey knit. It's got about the same amount of stretch as um, this tank top and a sewing machine. I'm also today using a serger, but don't feel like you have to. Shoot, you will also need some tracing paper and a pencil, and maybe a ruler, because we will be making these pattern pieces. Let's jump into it. All right. First, you'll want to line up the shoulder and side seams for the front by folding the top in half. The front and back pieces aren't the same, so you may have to gather some of the fabric to tuck behind. We're then going to trace our shirt with a seam allowance. I used a half inch seam allowance and whoops, I didn't know that my paper wasn't big enough, so I added a little bit of piece of paper. We're going to use a half inch seam allowance and we are going to trace a line from each dot once we've marked dots all the way around. Um, if you're gonna use a serger for this project, I would recommend a quarter of an inch now that I'm kind of done and I figured it out, but a half inch works as well. The most important part of a seam allowance is that you follow it and you remember it and you make sure that you fold over that amount when it's all said and done. So we're tracing that around, um, making sure to be careful to get that neckline. So once you connect all of that, you also wanna indicate on the pattern piece, whether it's the front or the back. And I also put on there uh, on fold so that I know when I lay my fabric out, I know that that should be on a fold. Go ahead and cut that out and repeat for the back of the shirt or for whatever pieces you're making for your garment. And then once you have that all done, you'll have two finished pattern pieces. You also want to write on there your seam allowance for future use. Hooray! Now we're going to look at them, admire them, and then make sure that the shoulder seams match up in size. Um, so I'm just trimming off a little bit here. And we also want to make sure the armpit to the bottom is the same length as well. And it is. So we're going to go ahead and cut out our fabric. You want to make sure that your fabric is laying with the stretchiest part going horizontal to stretch across your um, body. I'm gonna use these pattern weights and go ahead and use my rotary cutter to cut this out. I have a cutting board and a rotary cutter, which is very nice, but totally not necessary. You can use pins to pin your pattern pieces to your fabric and then cut them out with scissors. Now we're gonna do that same process for the back. I like to use as much as I can, so I cut really close to my other cuts just so there's as little waste as possible. So using our base garment as a guide, we're gonna kind of reverse engineer this and figure out in what order it was assembled. So by looking at this, I can identify that it went shoulder seams, side seams, finish all the edges, and then hem everything. So we're gonna start by first pinning the shoulders together and I'm gonna test out all of my stitches. I wanna make sure that when I go in there and stitch that it's not messing up on my nice fabric. So once we've done the shoulder seams, we're gonna do the side seams by pinning those up and serging those together. And once I tried this on, I noticed that I needed to come in just a little bit under the armpits because it's a little bit gapey, so I did that. Now it's time to finish all of our raw edges with a serger or a zigzag stitch. All right, now for top stitching. I installed a twin needle to allow for some stretch as you can see here. And I also am using a walking foot so that it helps the fabric kind of glide a little bit better through the sewing machine. But if you don't have these things, it's totally fine. Just use a zigzag stitch. And we're gonna back stitch at the start and finish of each stitch. And then we are chef's kiss done. Hey guys, this is the final product. It looks a lot like my other tank top, which was the goal, so I'm happy about that. Fits great, very comfy. What do you think? So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed being here and I hope that you learned something and 
I hope that this will inspire you on your journey to duplicate some of your favorite clothing. If you like this video, I hope that you stick around. If you wanna watch another video, maybe there will be one here. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you plan on recreating any of your clothing. I'm really happy that you were here and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, ooh. First, you will need my shirt. Looks like my other. <laughs> See ya.